Risa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Do you have a favorite hymn or worship song? Well, usually it changes like every, <laughs> it changes like every two months or something. Uh, but currently, it is Promises by Maverick City. Go listen to it. It's awesome. Um, so I think I think I have a favorite hymn. Which is love divine, all loves excelling. Do you want to sing some for us? Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Thank you. Um, and what I think I love about it is the last verse, which goes, Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless, let us be. I think that's... um. I think that's one of the... And then it also goes, Changed from glory into glory. Not with that melody, though. That's terrible. <laughs> um, till at last we see thy... So, change from glory yeah. into glory. Till at last we see thy face. Till, uh, till we cast our, cra our crowns before thee, lost and wonder, uh, love and grace, I think it is. Or time and space. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. It rhymes, anyway. Um, but, yeah, I think the reason I like that is because um, so many hymns talk about us going off to be in heaven, in the clouds, in some sort of um, vague sense of, of what heaven is. But this is actually talking about um, the, the heart of the gospel is, I think, um, Jesus coming to earth and building his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And so I love how it talks about the new creation and changing us from glory into glory, that you know, this present life and the suffering we experience isn't, isn't the end, but Jesus is making all things new. That's yes. why I love it. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Hit me. Dave, what is the purpose of worship? Can I get to throw it? Can I throw it? Can I, what? Throw, it? Can I throw it? What yeah. is the purpose of Oh, yeah, of you worship? can throw it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, bookshelf. What is the purpose of worship? Yeah. That's a good question. What do you think? Well, I think the purpose of worship is uh, an offering sort of a thanksgiving mm. to God. Um, and, I mean, he's done so much for us, so I guess worship is sort of the least we can probably do mm. to glorify him and thank him for what he's done. So, mm. I think that's the purpose of worship. Mm. It's like everybody coming in as one to glorify one. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's so true. And um, It's the Westminster Catechism, which is one of the kind of ancient sort of uh, doctrinal statements of the Church of England, which says that the chief end of, of man is to uh, enjoy God, basically. Yeah. And I think... Worship is one of the ways that we do that. We experience Him, we experience His presence, and we get to take uh, lift the, uh, the thoughts of ourselves and our day-to-day -day activities and just enjoy God for who He is. Yeah. And we sing truths about Him, um, not just to Him, but to each other, yeah. uh, which is one of my favourite things about worship. Excellent. <laughs> I can already tell, it's like the hard questions. <laughs> not quite yet. Okay, okay. okay. What are the differences between ancient and modern hymns? I think this is in reference to the book, um, which is, is called Hymns Ancient and Modern. But um, yeah, what are the differences between ancient and modern hymns? Do you have any thoughts on that, Risa? I'm going to put it down nicely this time. <laughs> um, ancient, okay. Ancient hymns, if we see, they're sort of... This is a really bad way of putting it, but posh words, a lot of posh words, big words. And I feel like uh, very open and sort of it's kind of hard to explain it because it's quite different from the stuff we listen to today yeah. so if we talk about modern music it's sort of um it's written and based on like the world that we live in and so sort of, like the issues that we go through and stuff and so modern music also more engaging i feel like if i'm talking from my perspective it's more engaging mm -hmm. so i guess i think yeah. the purpose of both is worshiping god i definitely agree i mean the two styles are steeped in, in their own um, eras, really, yeah. aren't they? Um, there tends to be a, a, a situation where some of the more, what we call ancient hymns, yeah. um, you know, Victorian hymns and, and yeah. earlier, uh, would perhaps be more focused on towards God, and maybe some of our more modern hymns, particularly uh, in recent times with sort of charismatic renewals and so yeah. on and so forth, can be said to be focused on our emotions, our thoughts about God. Yeah. And so it's not that the two are bad, but actually they serve different purposes. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps within the context of a service, they can serve different purposes to bring us into that place of intimacy, yeah. um, which is, is, is the goal. Whose go is it? It's mine. <laughs> okay. Dave. 
Does the Bible have anything to say about music? There's a throwaway line in the Gospels which I really love, which is just before Jesus goes to the cross, mm -hmm. um, after they've had the Last Supper together and they're about to head out to the garden with all the drama that's about to happen, they sing a hymn together. Yeah. And it's just a yes, throwaway they line. They do. But they sing a hymn together. together. And it's so, this amazing picture of actually through the trials and yeah, tribulations of life, yeah. actually worship re-centers us. Yeah. On wow. God and his purposes for us. That's really good. Okay, it's my go. Last question. Okay. What do you enjoy most about singing in worship and how would you encourage others to do the same? <laughs> I did not mean for it to go. <laughs> well, what do you enjoy most about singing in worship? Well, as obviously a 13 year old in church, <laughs> leading worship, um, and playing, it's obviously not the easiest thing. I'm mm. going to tell you that. It's not the easiest thing. Um, but I do enjoy it. I think it's more of coming together and having that privilege and that sort of the opportunity of leading God's people into his presence is a really, really big opportunity if you think about it because it's sort of worship is worship leading isn't just sort of um, it's a good thing for yourself but it's also sort of a sacrifice because you're looking making sure that not just you but everybody is involved and they're engaging and you mm. like everybody's feeling the presence of god mm. because when i remember it was a few many moons ago <laughs> um when we were in a church service and it was just me singing and then everybody else joined mm. and that was a really it created such a bigger impact and like mm. everybody was like goosebumps everywhere mm. because it was everybody singing doing their part whether it was <laughs> Whether it was in tune, out of tune, it didn't matter because yeah. everybody was doing it from the same intention and the same heart. So I think that creates a really big impact. So sing if you can sing. Yeah. Don't, I mean, even sing if you can't sing, just keep your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say with, like, <laughs> with COVID around. Yeah. You know. yeah. And part of the challenge, I think, for a worship leader is um, I mean, you have more experience than me, but like, is, is trying to maintain that simplicity of, of encouragement yeah. and, and connection with people and really just bring them into a safe place where they can, yeah. where they can sing.